Our world is full of mysteries and strange phenomena that cannot be explained, even by the most knowledgeable scientists. From strange geological oddities to unusual animal behaviors, join me, we're gonna count down the top 15 craziest natural phenomena. Let's start with number 15, murmurations. Murmurations are a mesmerizing natural phenomenon where large flocks of birds, typically starlings, come together, often by the thousands, to create stunning aerial displays. These incredible formations are characterized by intricate, synchronized movements resembling a thick, living, undulating cloud in the sky. One of the most well-known examples of murmurations occurs in Europe, where millions of European starlings gather in the late afternoon, just before dusk, during the autumn and winter months. These gatherings often happen in locations with access to a reliable food source and suitable roosting sites like marshes, reed beds, and urban areas with large trees. The timing of murmurations is crucial, as it provides the birds with safety in numbers. By roosting together at night, they're less vulnerable to predators like raptors and owls. The collective behavior helps them conserve energy and maintain body heat, particularly during colder months when temperatures drop significantly. Birds in the flock respond rapidly to the movements of their nearest neighbors, leading to a cascading effect that propagates throughout the entire group. This continuous adjustment to the changing positions of the other birds in the flock results in the swirling dynamic patterns that create a moving work of art in the sky. Instead of being sitting ducks, the swirling mass of birds can confuse and intimidate potential attackers, making it difficult for a predator to focus on an individual target. Additionally, murmurations can be a way for starlings to exchange information about food sources and sustainable habitats, as well as means of selecting potential mates. Number 14. The Sky Mirror the sky mirror, also known as Salar de Uyuni, is one of the most remarkable natural phenomena in the world. You can reflect on this natural mirror in Bolivia, South America. It's the world's largest salt flat, covering an area of approximately 4,000 square miles at an elevation of around 12,000 feet above sea level. The name Salar de Uyuni originates from the nearby town of Uyuni, which serves as a gateway for travelers visiting the landscape. It all started a few million years ago. This area was a part of a massive prehistoric lake that eventually dried up, leaving behind a vast salt desert. The salt crust covering the area is remarkably flat and reflective, creating this unique mirror effect during the rainy season, November to April, when a thin layer of water covers the surface. Naturally, this is the best time to visit, but it's that thin layer of water that creates this superb illusion, blurring the line between the horizon and the sky, making it appear as if you're walking on water. And no need to worry about seven years of bad luck because this is one mirror that will never crack. Now, because of all the sodium chloride spread across this mirror, it doesn't make for the greatest cradle of life. There are certain forms of life that have adapted to the extreme conditions of the salt flats. Some microorganisms, such as salt-loving bacteria, can thrive in the highly saline environment. These specialized microorganisms can withstand extreme salinity and even give the water a distinctive color, ranging from green to red, depending on the prevailing conditions. Apart from these perfectly evolved microorganisms, the Salar de Uyuni is mostly devoid of larger plant and animal life. The salt crust and arid climate create a harsh environment that's inhospitable to most organisms. The lack of vegetation and limited food sources also contributes to the absence of larger fauna, making it a perfect playground for tourists, adventurers, and photographers. Number 13. Brine Pools Brine pools, they're yet another fascinating little salty natural phenomenon, only this time found underwater. Brine refers to highly concentrated salt water, often far saltier than the surrounding seawater. These brine pools are essentially little underwater lakes or pools of brine that form on the sea floor due to specific geological and chemical processes. Think like a jar of old school pickles, the same applies here. They're formed when water with high salinity, usually due to the dissolution of salt deposits in the sea floor, seeps up from the Earth's crust. This brine is denser than the surrounding seawater, so it accumulates in depressions or pockets on the sea floor, creating brine pools. The extreme salinity in these pools prevents them from mixing with the surrounding seawater, creating a distinct boundary known as a halocline. But it's a distinction that you can literally see as if two separate bodies of water are competing for space. The appearance of brine pools underwater can vary, but they're often recognized by their distinctive visual characteristics. The pools may have a darker color than the surrounding water due to the high concentration of dissolved minerals. On top of that, they can create mesmerizing, shimmering effects caused by light refraction due to the variations in salinity. 
Swimming in brine pools is not advisable due to the potential presence of toxic chemicals and gases. Because the brine is so supremely salty, getting in there with bare skin and open eyes may burn a bit. Some brine pools can even contain toxic substances like hydrogen sulfide, which is harmful to us humans. While brine pools are not as common as other underwater features, they're found in various locations around the world. They're particularly prevalent in regions with geological activity that leads to the release of brine from the sea floor. Some of the well-known places where brine pools have been discovered include the Gulf of Mexico, the Red Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Gulf of Oman. Number 12. Foxfire Fear not, animal lovers, because foxfire involves neither foxes nor fire. So, what exactly is it? Well, foxfire is also known as bioluminescent fungi. It's a mesmerizing and bizarre natural phenomenon that captivates both scientists and nature enthusiasts. Unlike summer fireflies or other bioluminescent creatures, these bioluminescent fungi create their own eerie glow, making them unique in the world of bioluminescence. Foxfire is caused by a chemical reaction within the fungi. The exact chemical process involves an enzyme called luciferase, interacting with a molecule called luciferin, along with oxygen, to produce light. This light emission is the result of a complex and fascinating biochemistry that occurs within the cells of the fungi. If it's your first time seeing it in the wild, then the appearance of foxfire can seem ethereal, mysterious, and maybe even a little spectral. It emits a soft greenish-blue or yellow-greenish glow that illuminates the surrounding environment in kind of a haunting and magical way. The luminescence is usually more visible in low-light conditions, so nighttime is the best. Under the cover of a dense forest canopy is also better. Bioluminescent fungi primarily appear on decaying wood and other organic matter, where they play a vital ecological role in the decomposition process. They feed off the decaying matter, breaking it down and recycling the nutrients back into the ecosystem. As they do so, they create this enchanting glow that attracts insects and other organisms that might aid in their dispersal. The occurrence of foxfire is relatively rare, and it depends on specific environmental conditions. Everything needs to be just right, so seeing it is like capturing lightning in a bottle. But certain fungi species, such as the Panella stypticus and the Armillaria malea, are well known for their bioluminescence. Several famous examples of foxfire have been observed around the world. In the United States, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is a well-known location to witness this bioluminescent fungi in action. In Japan, species are found in the forests of the Key Peninsula and is known locally as Hitomebore, or love at first sight due to its mesmerizing green glow. Number 11. Rainbow Eucalyptus the rainbow eucalyptus, scientifically known as Eucalyptus de Glupta, is a crazy-looking tree that's native to Southeast Asia and northern parts of Australia. Now, unlike typical eucalyptus trees, the rainbow eucalyptus stands out for this extraordinary and vibrant color display, making it a captivating sight for anyone lucky enough to witness it. Sadly, though, there is no pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. These trees are primarily found in countries such as the Philippines, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and various parts of northern Australia. They prefer areas with high humidity and annual rainfall of around 150 inches or more. The ideal climate for the growth of rainbow eucalyptus is a warm and humid tropical climate with regular rainfall. They thrive in regions with well-drained soils and are typically found near riverbanks and in lowland forests. The trees require plenty of sunlight to develop that vibrant bark color fully. The most striking feature of this tree is also the most obvious, the spectacular array of colors visible on its bark. As the bark peels away, the newly exposed inner layers reflect light differently, resulting in these brilliant and ever-changing colors. In terms of size, rainbow eucalyptus trees are known to grow up to 250 feet tall and typically have a trunk diameter of around 6 feet. They are some of the tallest trees in the world, reaching impressive heights that contribute to that majestic presence in the tropical landscapes they inhabit. But with such a wild coloration, can animals take a bite and taste the rainbow? Well, absolutely. Birds like parrots and lorikeets are known to feed on the nectar-rich flowers of the tree. Additionally, the leaves are consumed by certain insects and herbivores, and no, it doesn't give them rainbow droppings. Number 10. Marble Caves the Marble Caves, also known as the Cuevas de Marmol, are a series of stunning natural formations located in the General Carrera Lake, or Lago General Carrera, which straddles the border between Chile and Argentina in South America. The caves are situated in the Chilean portion of the lake near the small Chilean town of Puerto Rio Tranquillo. 
The discovery of the marble caves is attributed to the local Chilean Carrera family, who are believed to have stumbled upon the caves while navigating the waters of General Carrera Lake during the 20th century. The specific date of their discovery remains unclear. These caves owe their existence to the gradual erosion of the surrounding rock formations by the lake's waters over millions of years. The caves are primarily made of marble, a metamorphic rock formed from limestone under intense pressure and heat. The marble in these caves have been sculpted into breathtaking shapes, including caverns, tunnels, and arches, all exhibiting intricate patterns and mesmerizing colors. To reach the marble caves, travelers often start their journey from Chile's capital, Santiago, and fly or drive to a small town in the region. From there, they proceed to Puerto Rio Tranquillo, a small village located on the shores of General Carrera Lake. Tour boats are, of course, available at the village to take visitors on guided excursions to the marble caves. Number 9. Red Tide The only thing scarier than a red ocean is the creature causing the change of color underneath the currents. But this isn't a nasty shark attack. This is the Red Tide. Red tides are also known as harmful algal blooms, are natural phenomena characterized by the rapid growth and accumulation of certain species of microscopic algae in marine or coastal waters. The term red tide is an obvious one. The discoloration of the water caused by the high concentrations of pigmented algae, creating the haunting reddish or brownish hue. Typically, the red tides are primarily caused by the proliferation of phytoplankton species, such as dinoflagellates and diatoms. These algaes become abundant due to the favorable environmental conditions, including warm water temperatures, high nutrient levels, think nitrogen and phosphorus, and calm water conditions that allow them to remain concentrated in one area and freak the landlubbers out. But what's truly going on underneath the waves? Is it safe to swim in this red tide? Well, that depends. Some algae produce potent toxins that can harm marine life, leading to fish kills and the death of other aquatic organisms. Additionally, these harmful algal blooms can have cascading effects on the marine ecosystem, disrupting the food chain and causing significant ecological damage. The toxins produced by certain algae can lead to the phenomenon known as shellfish poisoning. Eating clams or mussels that live in a red tide can mean anything from a trip to the bathroom to a trip to the hospital. Number 8. Sailing Stones the sailing stones, also known as the moving rocks, are a mysterious geological phenomenon that happens in Death Valley in California in the United States. The area where this phenomenon happens is called the Racetrack Playa, a dry lake bed characterized by a vast, flat expanse of dried mud. It's approximately 2.8 miles long and about 1.3 miles wide, and it sits within a remote and desolate region of Death Valley National Park. This phenomenon was first documented in the early 20th century, with initial observations made by prospector Joseph Crook and his friends in 1915. However, the mystery surrounding the phenomenon persisted for decades. The most intriguing aspect of the sailing stones is the trails left behind by the moving rocks. These trails can be several hundred feet long and are often perfectly straight. Some trails even feature sharp turns indicating that the rocks change direction during the movement. But are these rocks alive? Were they captured, packaged, and sold as pet rocks in the 1980s? Well, no, not quite. The exact cause of the Sailing Stones movements remained elusive until the 21st century, when researchers from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography discovered that during the rare occurrences of winter rain, the thin layer of water on the lake bed freezes at night. This creates ice sheets that can be pushed by even the slightest wind, moving the rocks along the muddy surface of this playa. This creates ice sheets that can be pushed by even the slightest wind, moving the rocks along the muddy surface. Moving on to number seven, water spouts. All right, water spouts, they're whirling weather phenomena that happen over bodies of water, typically oceans, seas, or large lakes. They're essentially tornadoes that form above the water's surface, drawing up water into the air, hence the name water spout. Water spouts form in a similar manner to tornadoes, but the exact science behind their formation is not entirely understood. They're typically associated with specific weather conditions, like during thunderstorms or unstable atmospheric conditions with warm, moist air near the surface and cooler air aloft. There are two main types of water spouts, tornadic water spouts and fair weather water spouts. Tornadic water spouts are similar to tornadoes and form from rotating thunderstorms or supercells that extend over bodies of water. They descend from the base of the parent thunderstorm, sucking up water and debris from the surface. Now, fair weather water spouts, on the other hand, form in calm weather conditions, often under scattered cumulus clouds. They don't have a strong association with thunderstorms, but are still associated with unstable atmospheric conditions. 
No matter which type, the size of the water spouts can vary significantly. Small water spouts have a diameter of only a few feet, while larger and more powerful ones can have diameters of several hundred feet or more. On average, they typically move at speeds ranging from 5 to 20 knots, approximately 6 to 23 miles an hour. In more intense water spouts, especially tornadic ones associated with thunderstorms, the powerful updrafts can potentially draw in water and our fishy friends up into the spout before churning them and spitting them back out. And while they may not suck a boat straight from the harbor, water spouts have certainly been known to cause some damage to property. Plenty of notable water spouts have been documented around the world. In 2003, a water spout was captured on camera near Sydney, Australia, spinning its way over Botany Bay, providing a wet and whirling sight for those lucky enough to catch it. In 2013, another water spout was recorded off the coast of Genoa in Italy. Number 6. Maelstroms Maelstroms, often referred to as whirlpools, are one of the most awe-inspiring and terrifying phenomenon in the natural world. These powerful vortices of water, characterized by their immense size and intense turbulence, can be found in various marine environments across the world. The word maelstrom is derived from the Dutch phrase maelstrom, which means grinding current, an apt description of these churning forces the whirlpools exhibit. Most people will go to the grave without ever having seen a whirlpool, and it seems many of them exist in our imagination, but make no mistake, these whirlpools are real. At the heart of a maelstrom lies a powerful convergence of currents, where tides, winds, and underwater topography converge to create a swirling mass of water. The most famous maelstrom, perhaps, is the Moskstraumen, located off the Lofoten Archipelago in Norway. It was immortalized in literature by Edgar Allan Poe in his story, A Descent into the Maelstrom. Its monstrous dimensions and tremendous power have long captured the imagination of seafarers and poets. Maelstroms are not mere surface-level whirlpools. Their reach extends into the depths of the ocean. In some cases, they can reach hundreds of meters in diameter, and the downward force they exert can pose a significant threat to marine life, ships, and even submarines. Vessels caught in the clutches of a maelstrom are often subjected to severe turbulence and spiraling motion, making escape extremely hazardous and near impossible. The formation of a maelstrom is heavily influenced by the unique geography of a region. Narrow channels or straits with rapidly changing depths and shapes, such as the Salzstraumen in Norway or the Naruto Strait in Japan, are prime locations for maelstroms to manifest. These constrictions force large volumes of water to accelerate, resulting in the creation of these intense circular currents that seem to engulf everything in their path. Think of them almost like an inverse water spout. Number 5. Pororoka Pororoca is a tidal phenomenon that happens along the Amazon River in South America. It's known as one of the world's largest tidal bores. Pororoca's name originates from the indigenous Tupi language, meaning great destructive noise or roar. This natural event is the result of a unique geographical condition and the immense volume of water carried by the Amazon River as it meets the Atlantic Ocean. The Pororoca, a type of tidal wave that travels upstream against the river's current, is caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun, which creates a bulge of water that propagates upstream against the normal flow of the river. When this tidal wave encounters the narrowing estuary of the Amazon, it transforms into a powerful surging wave that moves upstream with incredible force, sometimes reaching heights of up to 40 feet. The tidal board doesn't happen every day, though. If you want to see it, you'll have to time it right with the heavens themselves. It typically happens during the equinoxes in March and September, when the gravitational forces of the sun and moon are in alignment, resulting in the highest tides. As the tidal wave surges upstream, it picks up speed and gains momentum, producing a characteristic thunderous roar that echoes throughout the surrounding landscape. For the communities along the Amazon River, the Pororoca is both a blessing and a challenge. On one hand, it brings a burst of life to the river, replenishes nutrients and increasing fish stocks. It also attracts fishermen from far and wide who eagerly await the arrival of the tidal bore to harvest its abundant offerings. However, it also poses significant dangers, especially for those who are unprepared. The sheer force of the Pororoca can destroy boats, flood coastal areas, and wash away anything in its path. And the raw power has also attracted plenty of daredevils over the years as well. Adrenaline junkies from around the world become intrigued by the Pororoca's immense waves and began attempting to surf it. Riding the Pororoca is not for the faint of heart. It requires skill, experience, and nerves of steel. Surfers must contend not only with the wave's power, but also with the river's muddy waters, which often make for some nasty wipeouts. 
The city of Sao Domingos in Brazil has become a renowned destination for those seeking to witness or surf the Pororoca. The tidal bore festival draws in surfers, spectators, and researchers alike, all captivated by the impressive display of nature's might. Number 4. Square Waves so, when we think of ocean waves, we often conjure up images of graceful curves rolling onto sandy shores or majestic swells crashing against the rugged cliffs. But in the vast expanse of the ocean, another mesmerizing and rare phenomenon happens, the intriguing and captivating square waves. These waves defy the usual fluid-like undulations, instead presenting a geometric symphony that both fascinates and puzzles oceanographers all over the world. Unlike the serene and smooth waves we commonly envision, square waves are characterized by sharp angles and edges, forming distinct square-like patterns. These waves, known as cross seas or square cross seas, happen when two wave systems intersect at nearly perpendicular angles. The conditions for the formation of these square waves are as specific as they are uncommon, relying on the interplay of various factors. The primary factors involved wind direction and the presence of underwater geological features such as sandbanks or reefs. When the winds blow consistently from directions, waves generated by each wind system travel independently across the surface of the ocean. As these waves travel, they carry their energy and momentum, causing them to interact and intersect with waves from other directions. When two wave systems meet at approximately right angles, a remarkable interference pattern emerges, creating these unique square wave patterns. It's as if nature decided to mix a game of tic-tac-toe with its artistic prowess. The appearance of these square waves in the ocean may seem like an optical illusion or a digital manipulation, but it's very much a real and crazy phenomenon. These rare occurrences are often fleeting and transitory, lasting only as long as the varying winds persist and the wave systems continue to interact. Blink and you could miss it. But for sailors and seafarers, square waves can be a challenge to navigate, as the intersecting waves create unpredictable and turbulent conditions on the surface. The resulting crisscrossing patterns can lead to choppy waters, making for a bumpy ride and challenging sailing conditions. But these square waves are not exclusive to the open ocean. In some instances, similar wave patterns can also be observed in harbors, estuaries, and other enclosed bodies of water with complex geometries. They highlight the delicate dance of wind, water, and geological features, showcasing nature's ability to surprise us with its geometric wonders. Number 3. Canada's Spotted Lake Nestled in the arid landscape of British Columbia's Okanagan Valley, Canada's Spotted Lake stands as a unique and enigmatic natural wonder. Also known as Kliluk, this mesmerizing lake is a mosaic of mineral-rich pools, forming a mesmerizing display of various colors and geometric patterns. The lake's distinctive appearance and cultural significance have earned it a place of reverence among the indigenous First Nations people and intrigued travelers from around the world. Spotted Lake's extraordinary appearance is a result of its high mineral content. It contains a rich concentration of minerals such as calcium, magnesium sulfate, and sodium sulfate. During the hot, dry summer months, the lake's waters evaporate, leaving behind these minerals that crystallize and form natural pools. Each pool takes on a unique hue, ranging from deep blues and greens to shimmering yellows and browns. The colors intensify as the water evaporates, creating a striking spotted pattern across the lake's surface. The lake's appearance has made it a site of spiritual and medicinal significance for the indigenous peoples for thousands of years. They believe that the lake's waters possess healing properties and consider it a sacred place for their traditional healing practices. Now, historically, they would gather at the lake to collect the mineral-rich mud and waters to use in traditional healing ceremonies. In the early 20th century, when Canada sought to exploit the mineral deposits for industrial purposes, the lake's cultural significance and ecological importance came into conflict with commercial interests. The minerals found at Spotted Lake were used in the manufacturing of munitions during World War I. As a result, the lake and its surroundings were subjected to various industrial activities, leading to concerns about its preservation. Recognizing its ecological and cultural significance, the Canadian government eventually purchased the land surrounding the lake and designated it as a protected area. Since then, efforts have been made to balance tourism and conservation, ensuring that visitors can experience the wonder of Spotted Lake while respecting its sacredness and fragility. Today, the lake is privately owned, but its unique beauty continues to draw visitors from around the world. The best time to witness the striking spotted patterns is during the dry summer months when the water levels are low and the mineral pools are most visible. Researchers also continue to study its mineral-rich waters to gain insights on how extreme environments can shape unique ecosystems. 
Additionally, the lake's formations and those mineral deposits provide valuable data for the study of geology and mineralogy. Number 2. Sakurajima Dirty Thunderstorms In the heart of Kyushu in Japan lies the fiery giant known as the Sakurajima, an active stratovolcano that commands both respect and fear for those who behold its majestic yet formidable presence. But there's more to this volcanic wonder than meets the eye. Sakurajima is not content with merely spewing molten lava and ash. It unleashes another dimension of its explosive fury upon the world, the awe-inspiring Sakurajima Dirty Thunderstorms. Now, don't let the name fool you. These thunderstorms aren't really dirty in the conventional sense. Instead, they get their name from the volcanic ash and smoke that billows into the sky during an eruption. When Sakurajima decides it's time to put on a show, its fiery core erupts with a mighty roar, propelling tons of ash and smoke high up into the atmosphere. Up there, in the cool and turbulent upper layers of the atmosphere, something magical happens. The ash and smoke particles collide, generating an electric charge with every impact. Think of it as nature's own high-voltage smackdown, and this dirty display only escalates from there. The electrically charged ash and smoke particles create a spectacular display of thunder and lightning, as if nature itself decided to host a pyrotechnic extravaganza in the sky. The booms are like a cosmic battle cry, and lightning crackles are like a fierce electric current surging through the heavens. But these aren't your ordinary thunderstorms. These are the dirty thunderstorms, and they aren't messing around. The volcanic ash acts as a conductor, enhancing that electric charge and intensifying the thunder and lightning. The result is a symphony of fury, a breathtaking spectacle that strikes fear into the hearts of onlookers and reminds them of the sheer destructive might of nature. But make no mistake, this isn't just a dazzling performance. It's a powerful and unpredictable force that demands caution and respect. For those living in the vicinity, Sakurajima dirty thunderstorms are a reminder of the volcano's unpredictable nature. Volcanic ash can pose significant health risks, especially for those with respiratory issues. Those electrical discharges can also be dangerous to anyone caught in the eruption's vicinity. These dirty thunderstorms are best viewed from a distance. But for scientists and researchers, these thunderstorms present an opportunity to delve into the complexities of these explosive events. Studying these storms can provide valuable insights into the interactions between volcanic ash and atmospheric conditions, helping to improve our understanding of these phenomena. Beyond the scientific realm, these thunderstorms are also deeply embedded in the cultural fabric of the region. The volcano holds spiritual significance for the local community, and its eruptions have been observed and recorded for centuries. The awe and reverence it commands serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between humanity and the natural world. Number 1. Monarch Migrations Monarch migrations are one of the most remarkable things anyone can witness in the animal kingdom. These small yet resilient creatures beat their wings as they embark on an epic journey, spanning thousands of miles in a quest for survival and reproduction. Their migration patterns serve as gorgeous reminders of how compelling nature can be. The monarch butterfly is a familiar and iconic insect known for its striking orange and black wings adorned with intricate patterns. Native to North America, monarchs are famous for their extraordinary migratory behavior, which involves two primary generations each year. During spring and early summer, the monarchs begin their northward migration from overwintering sites in Mexico and Southern California, where they've spent their winter months in a sort of hibernation that conserves energy. This generation of butterflies travels north, laying eggs on milkweed plants along the way. The caterpillars that hatch from these eggs feed exclusively on milkweed, which also serves as their defense mechanism, as the toxins in the milkweed sap make them unpalatable to predators. As the first generation matures into adult butterflies, they continue the journey, following the availability of milkweed and nectar-rich flowers. This relay race continues through multiple generations as the butterflies progressively move northwards. Eventually, as the summer gives way to autumn, a special generation of monarchs is born, known as the Methuselah generation. Unlike their short-lived predecessors, these butterflies are hardwired for a more prolonged existence, living up to eight months. It's this generation that undertakes the incredible southward migration back to the overwintering sites. The fall migration of monarchs is even more awe-inspiring than the northward journey. This generation, fueled by a voracious appetite for nectar, embarks on an arduous journey spanning thousands of miles, guided by the changing angle of the sun and the Earth's magnetic field. 
They navigate through diverse landscapes, overcoming vast obstacles such as mountains, rivers, and cities, often traveling hundreds of miles each day. And just through evolution and instinct, these monarchs know exactly where to go. The monarch's final destination lies in specific forests of Oyamel fir trees in the highlands of Mexico, where millions upon millions of butterflies congregate to form dense clusters. This natural phenomenon creates a breathtaking spectacle, with the trees adorned in a vibrant orange hue as the butterflies blanket the branches. The conservation of monarch butterflies and their migratory journey has become a global concern in recent years. The population of monarchs has faced significant declines due to habitat loss, climate change, pesticide use, and of course, other human activities. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.